Shalom. I want to start off by giving all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Manatazak with GMS Ancient of Days in Los Angeles, currently teaching with the small sanctuary in Inglewood. And today, through the Spirit, I want to get into a lesson going into how we need to repent because tomorrow might be too late. Okay? Now, that's one thing that uh, a lot of Jakes have in common. When I say Jakes, I'm speaking about the children of Israel according to the scriptures and pursuing the prophecy, which today are you so called Negroes, so called Hispanics, and so called Native Americans. And of course, the speckled bird, the mixed multitude, mingling amongst the other nations. If the seed line through your father goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then it doesn't matter what you look like and what language you speak, you too are an Israelite. Okay? Now this lesson of exhortation, okay, is going to how we need to repent, which basically means to turn back. Okay? Because the, the, the prophecies are moving uh, very rapidly. Okay? And, and before you know it, it's going to be a time like never before, the time of Jacob's trouble. Before you know it, the prophets are going to be off the internet. They're going to be off the highways and hedges. Before you know it, the doors of mercy are going to be shut. Okay? And, and, and as I was going into, the one thing that a lot of Jakes have in common is procrastination. Okay? We've been in uh, Babylon. We've been in captivity too long to the point where we have become expectant on expedient results because everything is always given to us quick and fast okay and and in our minds the prophecies have begin to begun to tarry but what do the scriptures say okay although they tarry wait for it because they will surely come they will not tarry okay and that's that's part of uh, uh, being the suffering servants that we are okay we must maintain our patience okay because if you have your eyes peeled, you will see that these prophecies are actually coming to pass. And we are living in the times now of, um, of these prophecies being fulfilled. Okay, so now is not the time to prolong your repentance. To prolong building a relationship with the Heavenly Father and the Only Begotten Son. From turning from your sins and living right to the best of your ability. And if you have the unction to teach... Stop procrastinating and get out there and do it. Put your hand to the plow and help push this ministry so you can do your part in waking up the hopeful elect and we can get out of here. We can be delivered, okay? Now, without further ado, I don't intend for this lesson to be long, but you know how the spirit is. We're going to begin the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 27, okay? And the headline reads, Observations About Life, okay? Because Jake... Uh, uh, Jake wakes up to uh, to the world around him and he sees uh, what the Johns and the Joneses are doing and thinks that he needs to mimic them. And what I mean by that is we are not just products of our environment. Okay? You leave it to the way society molds the perception of our people and you will think that our only outlet is athletics and entertainment. Okay? It's all folly, bread and circus. And to reach a certain level in this society, you have to sell out. And what I mean by sell out is live a life of extreme immorality. Okay? But it takes it takes someone with, with, with a strong sense of purpose and integrity to look themselves in the mirror and realize that there's a better way. Okay? But only the elect are going to do that. Only the elect are going to turn back to the Heavenly Father. Turn back to the law, statutes, and commandments that were given to us as a nation. Okay? And seek to please the Most High. Alright? This is Proverbs 27 and 1. It says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day might bring forth. Okay? So boast not yourself on tomorrow. Making lofty plans, extensive plans. Okay? Okay? The Lord is the one that seals the instructions of what we're going to do. There is no free will. Okay, it may appear that we have free will and that we're making these decisions. But when you come to the understanding that the deceived and the deceiver are his, okay, then that should bring great fear 
to you knowing that the Lord is the one that dictates what we do and who guides our steps. So if we've been moving in the ways of the world, that's a sign that we are moving towards a path of destruction. But if you have been woken up to the truth and you have that, 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 uh, that realization, okay, that there's so much more waiting for us and that our people have been put in this position as a punishment, okay, then you'll come to the realization that there's, there's better days ahead. We have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. And that's the kingdom of heaven, a kingdom of righteousness. Okay, and who in their right mind wouldn't want to be an immortal being living and ruling in righteousness? Okay, we need to look past Babylon, look past America. Okay, look past what society has fed us as being acceptable. Okay, and live into our purpose. Okay, as the scripture says, we are gods. And it may be hard for a lot of people to accept that. But that's the mind frame and the state of mind you have to move in. Okay, because you leave it up to society and we'd be nothing but a proverb and a byword until the day we die. Okay, I'm going to read that again. Proverbs 27 and 1 it says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Okay, so while you yet have liberty, turn to the Lord and repent. Otherwise, you're just going to keep putting the Lord off from day to day to day to day. And before you know it, the time of destruction is going to be at hand. And you're going to be put in a position where you wished you would have repented. You wished you would have done more videos. You wished you would have been more brotherly. The time and the opportunity is now. So why wait? Okay? Let's get the book of Sirach. Chapter 5, verse 7. And this is in the Apocrypha under Ecclesiasticus, okay? Not Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus. Or uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed, and perish in the day of vengeance. Okay? So don't, don't be about lip service. The Lord requires action. And every day, every minute that passes, every opportunity is an opportunity that could be used to serve Yahweh Bashim al -Shai. Okay, really consider that. The Lord uh, woke us up and gave us breath for a reason, to live into our purpose. Now, is that purpose going to lead towards destruction or is that purpose going to lead toward deliverance? At the end of the day, only the Most High knows, okay? But you can always put on as the elect. And what would members of the elect be doing in these last days? Things profitable for salvation, right? Uh, let's get a Psalms, quick precept, Psalms 7 and 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 7. I believe it's 7. Psalm 7 and 5, which reads, uh, let's see, is it 7? Let's see. Actually, you know what? I'll be, uh, Psalms 7 and I'll, I'll begin at verse 9. It reads, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous power trieth the hearts and the reins. Okay, and that's what we should be uh, praying for, the downfall of our enemy. As the scripture says, Esau is the end of the world. This is his rulership. Okay, and, and where are our people in the rulership of this so-called white man? At the bottom, destitute under these other nations. You can read Psalms the 83rd chapter and it'll tell you the nations that have a tumult against us, the Israelites. Okay? It says, My defense is of the Most High, which saveth the upright in heart. Okay? The upright in heart. The upright in mind. We have a renewed mind and, and, and a renewed outlook on life now that we have woken up to the truth and to who we really are pursuing to the scriptures that we've been reading 
and being preached to our whole lives. Now we have the full, true understanding of what this book is actually talking about. Okay, it's talking about the Israelites, our people, you so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans. All these great men in these great stories are about our people. Okay, this is the most accurate history book ever written. Okay, continuing on, it says the Most High judges the righteous, and the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn, if he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Now this is going into a psalm where uh, David, King David, is praying. Uh, for justice against his enemies but this same judgment that's going to befall the wicked that second death okay which is going to be world war three the icbms raining down on babylon the great two-thirds of our people are going to be caught up in that same judgment and you don't want to feel that fire you don't want to be a part of that judgment so the lord has given us a, a, a chance now to repent and turn back to the old ways put off the old man and seek the old paths we are in that grace period now, but the doors of mercy are closing. Okay? Let's get a. Uh, let's go back to the Apocrypha, to the book of Baruch, chapter 4. Back in the Apocrypha, the book of Baruch, chapter 4, beginning at verse 28. Okay. Let's see. Actually, I'll begin at verse 26. Actually, I'll begin at verse... Oh, man. I'll begin at verse 24. This is Baruch. Chapter 4, verse 24 says, Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. And that's, that's a beautiful promise. The Lord is going to come and save and redeem his people. But best believe it's going to be those that are doing the righteous works. Okay? Occupying themselves in righteous acts. Pursuing to the scriptures. Okay? And not joined on to the uh, the, the, uh, the ways and of the world and the wiles of the devil, so to speak. Okay? It says, My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. For thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. Okay, so, so the way we perceive time and the way the Lord perceived time is very different. Although it seems that things are tearing, okay, it's but a, but, but, but a snap of a finger or a bleak of an eye in the time of the Lord. Okay, and when you really think about it, what's time to an immortal? We're going to be changed and made immortal. And I say that humbly speaking. So we have great things ahead of us. And we are in the time of those prophecies being fulfilled now, in this lifetime. These are the times that the prophets wish to see. Okay? Verse 26, it says, My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto the Most High, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. And that's what we're doing now, crying to the Most High. Okay, we have his name, so we, uh, his name, and the name of uh, his only begotten son, Yahweh, which is the name of the heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai, which is the name of the only begotten son. Scriptures say that he would leave his name to an afflicted and poor people. We're not going to be afflicted and poor in the kingdom, so that's letting you know right here and right now that there's a group of men that have the true names of the heavenly Father and the only begotten Son, and we are crying out to him to deliver us and save us, and best believe the Lord hears those who are his. The scriptures say that he's going to speed up the time for the elect's sake. Right? Continuing on. Uh, verse 28. For as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High, so being returned, seek him ten times more. Okay? And ten is uh, uh, the, the number of perfection. So we're, we, we should be in the mindset to seek the Lord ten times more. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, the ultimate sign of integrity and self-reflection, okay, is looking yourself, you know, in the mirror and realizing that you need help. That, that, that your way is not the best way. 
okay, that the ways that you've been following, do, do as thou wilt, following the ways of the world, following after these entertainers and actors and actresses trying to make it in this world, chasing the bag, that's not the way. Okay, but even in this, this uh, truth, amongst our own community of, of Hebrew Israelites that have woken up to who they are, you still have wolves amongst us, spies amongst us. So this thing really is only for the remnant, that very small remnant. And if you are one of his, Yahabashim is, is going to lead you in the way in which you must follow. Okay? Because as the scriptures say, none of his are lost. Okay? Verse 29 says, For he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy again with your salvation. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem. Okay? And we're a people before we're a place. Right? It says, For... He that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoice at thy fall. Okay. It says, Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is she that received thy sons. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. And that's what's about to happen now. Not just with Esau, Edom, but with these other nations as well. Because remember, when Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to, going to destroy all the armies of the world and take their crowns, roughly paraphrasing. Okay? So, so once Yahweh Shai returns, that's going to be the start of our kingdom. Okay? And we are in the midst of those times now. We are in some very exciting times through the Spirit. All right, let's get uh, the book of Isaiah 30 and 21. Which reads, uh, let's see, actually I'll begin at verse 20. It says, And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And that's a beautiful promise. Because the Lord always sent his prophets, his teachers, okay, to go out and warn the nation before destruction comes. And that's exactly what we're doing, standing upon our watch and warning our people. So now is the time to repent. Now is the time to get right. Okay, because when that destruction comes, it's going to be too late to try to call out to the Lord for help, to try to get these breakdowns and these precepts. You're going to be left to your own vices, left to the plague of the mind, and left to the judgment that's going to befall you for not turning to the Lord while you had ample time, which is now. Okay? Verse 21, it says, And thine eyes shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right and when ye turn to the left. So if you're one of Yahweh by Shimei Ashais, he's going to lead you to the right teachers. Okay? Without question. Because the hopeful elect are going to hear this word and they're going to be sealed. Okay? And, and, and the foundation of that is, is knowing the names, trusting and believing in the names. And Great Millstone is the only group that stresses the importance of the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Even the scriptures themselves validify or uh, uh, validate that. Okay? All the scriptures is, is, is full of validity, but the scriptures validate the importance of the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai because it reiterates, right, that through no other name shall you be saved. Okay? Yahweh Shai HaMashiach is the name of the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son. Okay, the Savior of the nation of Israel. And even His name is a nomen nomen. For He saves, He delivers. Alright, let's get Romans 12 and 1. Which reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. So our lives are not our own to begin with. Okay? The spirits within us are not our own. They belong to the Most High. So whichever role that we have petitioned and set out for us, okay, is what we're going to do in the spirit. We just hope that we are found in the good graces of the Most High. Okay? I'm going to read it again. And the headline above Romans 12 reads, Dedicate your lives to the Most High. Right? It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, 
acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. And to be holy is to be separate. We are supposed to be separate from this world because we are not of this world. And we should pray to be used as vessels of the Most High to His pleasing and His liking. For His doing. For His purpose. Okay? Because the breath that we have, this, this breath of life, okay? This knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, okay, is, is, is given by uh, the Yahweh by Shema Shai. So it is our reasonable service to have Him use us as He will. Okay? He is the potter, we are the clay. I'm going to get uh, 2nd Ezra's 9, 2nd Ezra's 9 and 11. Let's see. Actually, I'll begin in verse 10. It says, For such is in their life. Uh, let's see. It says, For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty and when as yet place of repentance was open to them, understood not but despised it. So this is going into those Israelites now that are procrastinating. They're, they're tarrying. They're putting off the Lord from day to day. Now is that time of liberty that the scriptures are speaking about. Okay? But let's, see, let's, let's hear what happens to those that procrastinate and are continuing to live their life stagnant. Okay? The scriptures say the same must know it after death by pain. So this truth that you had the opportunity to get, not only are you not going to get it, but you're going to uh, you're going to die by pain, and you're just going to come back through the elect with that understanding that you could have got on this side. Okay, verse thirteen it says, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. And we're hoping to be accounted amongst that number, amongst that lot, the elect. Okay. Now I'm going to end it in Matthew 6 and 34. Okay. And these are the words of Yahweh Shai. This is red letter. It says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So don't worry about the things that are going to happen tomorrow. Make the most of the opportunity that you have now, today. It's never too late to turn back to the Lord until it is. So with that, I want to give all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. This has been your brother Manatazak. Now is the time to repent. Shallow walk.